I'll tell you a story. You take an antibiotic for your cold or sore throat or something like that. Have you taken that in the past? The first thing you notice the next day is you have no taste in the mouth. Your idli becomes very insipid. Your chicken becomes uh, tasteless. Do you know why? There you need about a few million germs in the mouth to get you the taste. There are your friends. We live in symbiosis. We are dependent. I am dependent on the germ. Germ is dependent on me. Without me, the germ cannot survive. Without the germ, I cannot survive. Now then, what I have done? It's nothing. Mouth is nothing. We have 27 feet of gut. Where you have billions of germs which are absolutely necessary for you. You kill them. A few of them you kill. So next day, after taking antibiotics, see the consistency of stool in the morning. Totally different. Some people get constipated, some people get diarrhea. It's totally different because the normal processing cannot go on without the germs. That is not all. I am not worried about that. Your whole immune system's head office. You know, Peter's head office is in Chennai. Though he works even in London and uh, Timbuktu and the other day he was in some other place. The head office of our immune system is in the gut between the mouth and the anus. And you are knocking off the head office. And your immune system falls each time you take an antibiotic. Can you believe that? Inviting all kinds of diseases from common cold to cancer. And it will take an ordinary course of time, two to three weeks for you to regain your appetite after stopping the antibiotic, to get back your original consistency of the stool and to feel well. So in short, all that we do is the problem. Now why do we run to doctors for every single thing? Yes. A study in Canada showed when 1000 people become sick in society, one man reaches the tertiary hospital. Do you understand that? And what do we teach students in the college, medical college? I am an ass of a teacher in the medical college for about half a century. We teach on that 1% case as 100% representation of society. Do you understand that? What chest pain I teach in the medical school is a heart attack chest pain only. But what chest pain happens in society is wife's problem chest pain, husband's problem chest pain, money chest pain, headache chest pain, Peter's chest pain, BMI's chest pain. Did you understand that? 99.9% .9 of the chest pains occur in the mind, which is in the chest also. And only 0.1% is due to heart attack. But a doctor who goes out of the medical school has this tunnel vision. Anybody has a chest before he says pain angiogram, when he says pain angioplasty, when he says pain twice bypass surgery, when he says pain to a fourth time you send him to heaven. This is the teaching. That is why I have written a book called What Doctors Don't Get to Study in Medical School. What's that book's name? What doctors don't get to study in medical school. If you want to get into the world of medicine and see what all happens there, read that book. But I wouldn't tell you, you buy that book. E is equal to MC squared. Was what, what is taught in the school. But no, E is equal to M. This was discovered by a great German physicist who is the present president of the Max Planck Institute, the highest seat of physics learning in the world. I have left India. I will come back to that. My friend at the... This man's name is Hans Peter Dior. H-A-N-S. Peter is Peter. Our Peter. Peter is everywhere. Dior. D-U-E-R-R. That's a German spelling. Peter is like mind. Ah, Peter is like mind. Everywhere. Peter is like mind. Peter is like mind. Hans is the present president of the Max Planck Institute. He was a colleague of... Albert Einstein, he was a colleague of Werner Heisenberg, he was a colleague of Niels Bohr, he was a colleague of all those great names in physics. But he is now 84, still very healthy, upright, 6 feet 3 inches tall, can't speak English well. We were lecturing recently in San Diego, he was lecturing on physics, I was lecturing on the wrong science of medicine in San Diego, which is a nice meeting, and Peter was speaking before me, he said, E is equal to M. Now you can read a simple article he has written for all of you in the internet. Write down. Matter is not made up of matter. What's the name of the article? Matter is not made up of matter. 
Yes, matter is not made up of matter. Author's name, Hans, H-A-N-S, Peter, P-E-T-E-R, Dewar, D-U-E-R-R. Go to Google, write that. He has written an article for you only. Read that. Anyway, now he said, E is equal to mc squared is wrong. E is equal to m. And I call it as a duality. What does Peter call it as? A duality. But what he said after that is very interesting. He said, who am I? I am not even a small speck of uh, dust in front of the great Indian seers who thousands of years ago called it as Advaita. And he quotes, that's the interesting part. I was ashamed sitting there on the days with him. He says, Bahirantas Chabutanam. It is inside and outside of everything. Charam Acharamevacha. It constantly moves but looks immobile. You and I look solid, but there is nothing solid about you. You and I are bundles of jumping leptoquarks. Sukshmavatet avidnyayam. It is so subtle that no science, no scope, endoscope, telescope, microscope, nothing of that can see it. Avidnyayam. It is beyond science. Very interesting. Durastam. For those who don't know, don't know. Cha. Aniketa cha. Those you know, it is inside you. Tat, he said. Tat, that. Leptoquark. Beautiful. Fantastic. Who says that? Hans Peter Dior. Ah, I know. <laughs> and I was really having tears in my eyes. And then he told me during dinner time, Professor Egbe, come to my department next time when you are in, in Europe. I will show you all the Vedas, the Upanishads, and all your scriptures in my department. And I have, a, I have a motto, I have a motto in my laboratory which says Tat Tom Asi. German, scientist, Christian, Methodist, does it matter? Does it matter? Wisdom is the same. Jesus never said hate anybody. Prophet Muhammad said, never hate anybody. Prophet Muhammad stood up when a dead body was being taken. His, his, his friend said, he is a kafir. Why do you stand up? He said, don't talk like that. I am respecting the spirit of another human being. And Prophet Muhammad said, respect everyone else like you. Jesus said, love thy enemy also. Love thy neighbor, of course, not the neighbor's wife, love thy neighbor. And even your enemy you love. That's the motto of this universe. That's how it can go on.